everybody. Okay, I promised we were going to make some rich and creamy cocoa mix. I've got all the ingredients from my last endeavor, the reindeer trail mix, cookie mix, moved out of the way. And I've got all the goodies that I need for my cocoa. I'm going to need another jar. Now, normally I make this in batches. I usually make it in two, three, or well, four, because it is a single recipe. But today I'm going to make it in a pint size, even though I don't have my pint size jars yet. Hopefully the delivery man will get here soon. I'm going to go ahead and make it one recipe for a pint size jar to go over it first. And then we'll move on and possibly make a whole quart worth, which is going to be a doubled recipe. So I haven't got everything ready, but I wanted to go over the ingredients first. I'm trying to get better about explaining to people what I use before we get started. So what we're going to need, and yes, I've made changes to this over the years because I like to try different things, and this is my go-to recipe the way I have it now. So one thing you're gonna need, and yes, I buy these in bulk because we're gonna make a bunch, is non-dairy creamer. Any creamer works. It can be brand name, off-brand, store brand. It doesn't matter. Just powdered, powdered, non-dairy creamer. You're only going to need three-fourths of a cup per one pint jar per recipe. The second thing you're going to need, sorry, is some form of instant non-dairy milk or, hold that, saw it. Oh, no, it ran away from me. Oh, no, it didn't. It's over here. I was ready. All right. Carnation works just as good. I love Nestle. I'm not a chocolate eater, but you'll see that I use Nestle. It's because of I prefer the creaminess, which it brings, but Hershey's store brand, any brand of any of this stuff I'm using today will work, and I'm on I'm pretty sure it's gonna come out tasting really good. So you're gonna need a half a cup per pint jar of dry milk. You can use non-dairy, you can use dairy, it doesn't matter. You're also gonna need chocolate chips. Now I'll use milk chocolate chips, but because we're putting so much sweetness in there, I have that upside down. I'm an upside down type of person, so anyway, we're going to use a semi-sweet mini chocolate chip, and since we're using Toll House chocolate today, we're going to use the same thing in the chips. You're going to need a half a cup of these per pint jar. See what else? Granulated sugar. Plain old white granulated sugar. Yes, I've already got it in my bowl. Ready to go. We're gonna do packed brown sugar. I like to see myself in that. So I know everybody's getting to see it as well. Packed brown sugar. What else are we going to use? We're going to use unsweet. I think they're, I'll be honest with you, I'm not even sure if it, I'm not even really sure if they make it sweet. I guess the Hershey's brand, if you want sweet. Cocoa powder. You're going to use a lot of that if you make batches. We're going to need three tablespoons of it per pint jar. And for the sugar, I didn't say it's going to be one-fourth cup. And the last thing that we're going to use is 
somewhere hiding around there. I mean, just regular old table salt. So, when we get to the end of this video, I'm going to give, I'm going to make some separate packages for my sale jars and I'll go over it with you but everybody likes their hot cocoa with something different you have marshmallows you have whipped cream you have peppermint and one thing I was going to buy this time but I didn't and I I still might run by and get some is caramel now they have in the baking section I don't know if they have it in the candy section but in the baking section they've got the little caramel balls beads whatever you want to call them i don't want to say anything that people are really going to laugh about here and instead of since i'm selling these even if you're not selling them they're nice to put on the side maybe wrap it or put a little hole punch in it and put it through with the ribbon you can get these little ziploc bags you can get these in the craft section of walmart or I don't know what all stores sell these. They're just little tiny. Or you can even get the snack Ziploc bags uh, down the Ziploc aisle. Uh, they sell these at craft stores. They sell them at Walmart. They sell them at most dollar stores. I think I've seen them at Dollar Tree as well. They're just really small bags. You can get smaller ones if you like. What are these? Four by six. You can use those and put just a little sticker on there. You know, those little tiny labels like, hello, my name is. I'm not encouraging anybody to fill that in. But also from Amazon, I got a hundred of these bags. And what I liked about them is they come with these little handmade labels so that you can pull them over and close them. So, since I'm actually selling the ones that I'm making today and tomorrow, well, hold on, tomorrow's Friday, the ones I'm making today, I'm going to go ahead and use that. And it also came with a nice little thing of ribbon. I'm not quite sure I'm going to use that on here. Um, let me see who I bought this from. Sailing Go. Sailing Go. Off of Amazon. Or, you know, most things on Amazon, they're all around the same price anyway. You just have to get what works for you with any store. But I try my best to let you know where I get things from. Uh, if you want the exact same thing. But just get what works for you. So we're going to do that. I've got different kinds of things that I can put in those bags to go with the hot chocolate. So at the end of the video, we'll go over that. Um, so I'm going to get everything ready and then we'll get started. <laughs> it's not working for me today. Okay. I tell you, the camera, it likes to catch those really dorky, uncomfortable moments for me. Um, so, normally, I would have all my ingredients ready. But, this is not a long, drawn-out situation. And, there's a lot to do today. So, I'm going to just... <sighs> Sorry, that drives me nuts. So I'm just going to move along in a minute, as soon as I gather my wits about me. So we need a bowl. Something that'll hold a, I think this one is a, what, is it, what have we got here? I have no idea. It's a bowl. It's a nice, big, deep bowl. Yay, I'm gonna play the drums on the bowl. Not really. Okay, so we're gonna combine all the ingredients in here 
accept anything that we're going to use as an add-in like peppermint or caramel or even honey uh, we're going to add them all in here get them all mixed up and then we're going to put them in a jar so you're going to go through this whole process with me if it's a long video i apologize but i'm really trying to keep as many mistakes or many other things that I say in the videos to help people who are learning how to do any kind of cooking or, well, kitchen things. Because sometimes you might make a mistake and somebody else might make the same make and they might want to know how to fix it or if it is fixable. One of my favorite persons on YouTube, I can't think of her name off the top of my head, uh, she, I was wanting to learn how to take my jewelry making to the next level, and she records it all. When she makes a mistake, she corrects it on video, and I think that has been a lifesaver to me when I'm learning how to make something new or go to the next level on something I'm already doing. I had my bucket over there, so now I'm just consciously putting everything over there. So, I'm just opening up my packages. I haven't made this. There we go with the sneezing again. <laughs> hey, it's been a fun, fun day. We have, in Texas right now, these little white bugs. They're called woolly aphids. And even though they're not technically dangerous... They can cause your allergies to flare up, and during flu, COVID season, and in Texas, we're still, we're always in allergy season. Um, oh, I don't need that. Um, it's just, it's just very unpleasant. Very, very, very unpleasant. Okay, so, the first thing we need is non-dairy creamer. Now that I've got everything opened except for my chocolate chips, let's get going. We're going to do three-fourths of a cup. It's somewhere around here. It's a third. Oh, wait. I am blonde moment myself. There we go. I'm just going to use... Okay, it's just... A little bit of sugar got in there. I was trying to figure that out. We're going to do three-fourths a cup of non-dairy powdered creamer. I'm just going to scoop it in. And I don't know if you can see me. Nope. You know what? I'm going to sort this out. I don't know what can be seen because it doesn't give me a preview. And I'm like... Trying to figure it out here. I'm still learning GoPro, so so I'm gonna put that in there using my scoop till I get to three fourths, and I'm just shaking it out a bit. And once I get close to three fourths, yes, there are a million easy ways to do this, but oh, I like to be complicated. I'm a girl. My husband watches these videos. I don't want him to think life is easy. Tapping it down to make it even. And then I'm going to look and see that I got just a bit much. That should be sufficient. I want that to be pretty even. It gives me an accurate reading. When I let level it on the floor, on the floor, yeah. <laughs> there we go, three fourths. When you're measuring things in a cup, having it on the table or flat surface that's even is always a plus. Otherwise, you can get it off, and sometimes a little bit more than you realize. So we're just gonna add that right in there. And set that aside for now. 
Now we're going to get our dry powdered milk and we're going to get a half a cup. This is why you have to have things together <laughs> so you're not all over the place. So we're going to use this half a cup. Again, you want to use, usually I would have all this stuff in a bowl, but I'm not ready to make my batches, so I'm trying not to get it all out. For any reason, the delivery man doesn't come today. I don't want to have it. And another good reason to have your surface clean. If you keep your surface clean and you spill something, you don't have to worry about getting things in it that doesn't belong. And you can actually just reuse it or put it back in its container. All right, so. In the bowl, we have three-fourths a cup of powdered non-dairy creamer. Now we're fixing to add a half a cup of non-fat dry milk. Oh, wait. You know what? I went on about that being non-dairy. That one's actually not a non-dairy milk. I apologize. But if you don't like milk products or you can't handle milk products, there is an alternative out there. Don't get me to lie about where. Where is my spoon? So I'm gonna just toss that around a bit. Sometimes I use my food processor or blender to really get that powdery, powdery. But you know, if you don't have a food processor or blender, you can also use a flour mill. Um, I don't have mine here beside me, but it's just a sifter, a flour sifter. And you can run it through. It mixes everything better and it gets rid of some of that grainy stuff there. All right, next we're going to do a half a cup of our mini semi sweet chocolate chips. For this recipe, I am just going to use the same stuff. I'm not worried about any cross-contamination with nuts or anything for my son. So, that's about right. I mean, oh, look, a few more fell out of the bag. Devastation. <laughs> you know, if you are a chocoholic, A, you're probably going to use sweet morsels, and B... You're probably going to add some extra anyway. It's not going to hurt. All right, so now we've got our three-fourths cup of powdered non-dairy creamer, half a cup of non-fat dry milk, and a half a cup of our semi-sweet mini chocolate chips. I had a blonde moment there for a minute. All right, so now we're going to add in... One for oh, that's another language. One fourth of a cup of granulated sugar. Just a flat, even amount on there. And also one fourth a cup. Of packed brown sugar. I was telling my son this year that I wanted him to have an experience of making popcorn balls. I used to make them, my brother and I, one of my brothers and I, we used to make them for the bake sales all the time during the holidays. And they were always the first to go. And, you know, my mom let us sit there at the stove stirring that hot candy when we were little. So I figure my son can as well. Those big pieces right there, you can break them apart. I wouldn't recommend using the, some of them are really big. So break them apart. I wouldn't leave them in there. It's just clumped together uh, 
sugar. It's not going to hurt anything, and I don't have my... Get that sugar off of my hands, and my hands are sticky. All right, so we've got one-fourth, one-quarter of our packed brown sugar. Drop it in there. Break it up a bit so we don't have any more of those. I'm just going to stir it, get it all going on the mix. You know, I could put this in a uh, in with a can of sweetened condensed milk and I probably could make myself sick off of it. I just want to make sure all the brown sugar is nice and broken up and blended. Now in my family, my girls, and we're all kind of different. We always mix our hot chocolate different. Hot water, milk, warm milk, it's all different. But this works either way. It works with milk. It works with milk alternatives. We don't do almond milk here. As I said, my son has an allergy, so I wouldn't know if it works with almond milk, but I'm sure if you've ever had a hot chocolate with almond milk before and it was fine then this will be perfectly fine as well all right now we've got in our one-fourth cup of granulated sugar and a fourth cup of packed brown sugar now we're moving on to the good stuff we're going to put a c3 of them where are they where's my good one every girl's got to have something pink in the kitchen We're going to put three tablespoons. I'm going to have to open another one of our cocoa. You know, if you're a chocoholic, you're not going to worry about those little lumps. But if you have too many lumps or they won't break up, again, use a flour sifter or flour mill to break them up so you get a more even accurate amount. So there's two tablespoons of chocolate cocoa, baking cocoa. If I wasn't on video, I'd be saying all kinds of weird, crazy things with different sounds and stuff. And yeah, I'm just going to use this one to flatten it out nice and flat. And we're just going to add what was left there into that one. Um, you can reuse these little things, too, if you need them. I think I used to use them for, like, different things. But I got to where I was having so many, I had to just give up on that. All right, so now we have in there our three tablespoons of unsweet cocoa powder uh, when I stir this I'm kind of giving a little bit of a mash to the more I guess grainy looking or more clumpy looking areas see it's starting to look like hot chocolate now but I'm gonna keep going with it for a few minutes because I really like it to mix up well Sometimes when I make it in batches, I'll leave the chocolate bits out, um, the little morsels out. That way I can make them really pretty layered in the jar. And you can layer this recipe as well. But I don't know about you, but when I'm in the mood for hot cocoa and I just want a cup of it, I don't want to have to make the whole jar. This you can make individually. 
or you can make a whole batch of it at one time. I always add directions and things onto the packages, which I'll be doing later on this evening. All right, next we need an eighth of a teaspoon, of a teaspoon, and I don't think I have mine. Nope, I do not. Where's my little bag? That's gonna be one thing that's probably missing out of my, oh, no, 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 there, there's one. Yay. Let me make sure you can see that. Where are we? An eighth of a teaspoon. The little teeny tiny one you think you never need, but get it of salt. An even amount on your spoon. Now, I just want to give this a good stir. I think I just heard my packages being delivered. Like I said in the previous video, making the cookies, the stores here in Gray County, Texas, and probably other places in the South are out of a lot of jars because it is the season where a lot of people are canning and preserving. I got lucky. Walmart had some on there. And I, they have them on Amazon and many other places. Walmart was the only one that could get them to me today since I need them to be finished today. And I was a slow poke about getting my jars this year. Alright, so now that that's all done, I'm going to get everything else ready. See that hot oh, hot chocolate? Go see if my jars might actually be out there. And then I'll be right back and we'll get ready to package that up. All right. So it wasn't the delivery man. So I don't have my pint jars at the moment. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my own hot cocoa jar. I got these at Tuesday morning in Longview. Texas and it needs some anyway. My son really likes having some hot cocoa. So I'm all where's my bucket? Ah, so has stuff on there. I actually have two funnels, but one of mine came up missing, so and just in the matter of a night, I'm assuming it's over there with the rest of the clean dishes I haven't put up yet. So, I'm going to use a jar, and I'm just going to, where did it go? Head is not screwed on today. I am going to just dump it into my jar with my funnel and my nice silicone spatula that helps me control it into the, if I could, I'm going to have to find a way to do this at a different angle so you're not just looking at my bowl. Let's see. There we go. So I'm just controlling it, going slowly, so that it all goes into the funnel, into the jar. And like I said, the silicone helps when you're using a rounded bowl because anything that's left over, it actually can scrape off really well. If you're using a wood spoon, You'll see it's not getting all those little remnants. And for chocolate lovers, which I'm not a chocolate lover. I'll eat chocolate, but I'm not one of those people who has to eat chocolate every day. I know a lot of y'all are probably going to say, oh my gosh, she's so crazy. But I like sour candy. I like fruity flavors and stuff. I don't know why I'm I think because my sister and I, we used to just get bags of sour candy and just go to town with it and prove that we could totally do it better than anybody else. Okay, so now I've got my jar of hot chocolate. As easy as that. I don't have to do anything else to it.
except maybe right hot cocoa on there. Mom's rich and creamy, so the kids, when they come over, the girls know that's my hot chocolate. Two of my daughters are going to be beating down my door if I don't make them a jar this season. Oh. Good thing I'll land on cleaning up all that mess later. Okay, so different areas have different items available. Now, since I'm selling these, I'm going to have to measure them out and make sure that I get a correct amount. Um, I think I got these at the Dollar General. They were really fluffy. I couldn't pass them up. And here you have charm shaped marshmallows like you find in Lucky Charms. A whole big, huge, massive um, 17 ounce bag of, well, charm shaped marshmallows. And I don't remember what I paid for this. We have a, a store. It's a ranch and home store called Atwoods. I don't know where all Atwoods has stores at. But if they have them, then if you have, if you have one, then yes, that's where I found these and the peppermints at. Seems like. Even though we're getting close to the season, I can't find peppermint sticks anywhere today or the day I went shopping, but they are just like Lucky Charms. And they're also more like the little dried marshmallows that you get for your hot chocolate, like Swiss Miss. You know, they have the little marshmallows. One year, I actually found the little tiny white marshmallows, but I couldn't remember where I found them. For all I know, they have them at Walmart or Kroger or Berkshire or somewhere. But yes, for those of you who love those types of marshmallows, you got a whole bag you can go buy. But so since I'm doing quart jars, I'm probably going to do a whole cup. I don't. I haven't really decided yet. I usually do all that at the end. But we're going to go ahead and see what that looks like. Those to a side for now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple or several of each and I'm going to have them there. I'm going to put three on display on my table. And then give people the option of the kind they want. Now, if one or two sell faster than the others, then I'll know that that's the preferred choice. And then I probably won't buy the one that people... We're going to prop you up because you're going to fall and make a mess all over my kitchen. Anyway. Yep, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. And don't go into my sugar either. You know, I should have put these in a bowl. I probably will put these in a bowl when it gets time to actually package them. So I'm going to get about a cup. Nightmare. Like I said, I'm going to do a quart jar, so when you make enough for everybody, everybody's going to want some marshmallows, right? Or most people. So for little tiny marshmallows like this, you don't want to be stingy. Come on, how many times did you have marshmallows with hot chocolate and you're like oh why can't there be any more so i would say 
<clears throat> a cup and a half in this little bag is perfect of the dried small marshmallows. All right, now let's see. Even if you're using the Ziploc bags, I think you could probably get a cup, cup and a half in there. So now let's see if we can even get a cup and a half of these in this bag. It matters when you're selling things to make sure you have a good measurement of what you use. That way you're, you can price your products better. Um, even when you're just doing these as gifts, it's always nice to consider how many people might be using the product and make sure everybody gets, everybody gets some of it. Alright, so that's that's only a cup of marshmallow. I'm thinking we're going to do a cup and a half of marshmallow as well. I don't think marshmallow is the most expensive thing that you can actually buy. So, you know, it's kind of like the extra you add on top. And you don't fully charge that amount, you know, it's not that big of a loss on some cases. And you don't have to worry about, yep, maybe a cup, one and a third, maybe a, yeah, I say one and a quarter of marshmallows or one and a half. No, wait, no, 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 that's not what I said. I'm going to repeat myself. About a cup and a third of marshmallows would work for that, I think. But anyway, let's move along. If you're making these at home, you're probably going to have this big bag of marshmallows like I do. And I have a can of whipped cream for my hot chocolate. So, huh. Mm. Yeah, I said I wasn't going to eat while making a video again, but... <laughs> now peppermint sticks are preferred but you can get these or preferably something you don't have to sit and unwrap and you can crush them up and they can put it in their coffee or just leave them whole you can leave them in the package and then people can just drop it in there and start around with a spoon but if you use peppermint sticks I'm not going to do these right now. If you use peppermint sticks, they can actually use the stick to stir their hot chocolate. And when you're making it as a gift, peppermint sticks are really nice. Yeah, we're not going to do those right this minute. I haven't decided how I'm going to do those yet. So, there's lots of options. I would put, for caramel... I would probably put about a cup and a half or a cup and a third of caramel in a bag because people who like caramel or like people who like chocolate, they like a lot. And if you want to get a little, maybe one of those little jars of honey to go with it. That would work too. Maybe put it in one of those cute little jars that actually come with a spoon. The possibilities are really endless when you're making things like that for the holidays for yourself, for friends and family, <laughs> or to sell. So, I'm going to clean up my mess. I'm going to get ready for some more stuff. And hopefully, when I come back, I'll have my pint jars. And we can, or when I'm done, I'll have my pint jars in the mail. And we can move on. If not, then 
well, I might not be able to finish this up until later tonight or tomorrow. I hope that everybody enjoyed this video. If you like my videos, please like, subscribe, share, and I hope you all have a good day. Thank you. Hi, everybody. So, just like the video with the reindeer trail mix, cookie mix, at the end of the video for the creamy hot choke for the creamy hot cocoa mix, I forgot to add in how to make it. It will be in the description below the video. So a whole pint makes about eight servings. Eight servings is about three fourths a cup each. One jar of rich and creamy cocoa. One pint jar of rich and creamy cocoa. Six cups of boiling water. So when you have marshmallows or peppermint sticks, you need to set them aside. Place your cocoa mix in a medium saucepan and add the boiling, boiling water. Stir until mix is dissolved and chips are completely melted. Keep warm over low heat if you need to. Pour into coffee mugs and add a peppermint stick, a peppermint, marshmallows, or top with some whipped cream topping to your heart's desire and serve hot and warm. Thank you. Have a good, wonderful day. I'm here.